Okay, how do we get internet 300 feet to the shop with a no dig option? We're not gonna dig in the ground, we're gonna go through the air, five gigahertz from here all the way to the shop. I got things I wanna do this winter and I gotta get it out there. We have the technology. What do we need to accomplish this feat? We need some outdoor ethernet cable, we need two post mounts for the antennas, and we need the antennas themselves. We're gonna use two of the TP-Link CPE710. Okay, don't forget, unless you want to do it again, go ahead and mark these. So I've marked this one as AP for access point, and this one I've marked with a C for client. Okay, for our mounts, we got these ProxyCast poles that we're gonna mount our antenna on. So let's open these. They provide four screws, but I'm only gonna use two. Uh, the reason is, um, it seems pretty strong, but on the other side of the house, the internet coming in is actually doing this exact same thing. Uh, slightly different bracket, but two screws just holding at the top. That's the way that the internet provider set it up and it's been holding out for a long time. So we're gonna do that also. Okay, I don't know if it's very obvious what we did from just looking at the video, but there's two long bolts. They're identical. It's not obvious to me from the instructions, but they are just M6 bolts, identical. Just pick one. You're gonna put that one through the innermost square on the bracket and the innermost circle of the pole. Now, that's where you have a choice. You can do option one or option two. Option one is to basically do a anywhere bolt. You can install the bolts to allow you to adjust the angle anywhere you want it to be. The option two is the preset. So you're gonna have, um, you know, zero or 45 degrees, either way you want it, up or down, negative, positive. I don't foresee us using the anywhere angle. I really think we're gonna end up with just a standard straight up and down pole, and we're gonna point it right over there. So that's where I put it. We're gonna come back and tighten those bolts and nuts. I'm probably gonna put some Loctite on there because I don't think those are gonna hold very well by themselves. Uh, they are stainless steel, they're not gonna rust hard. So there's nothing really holding that on. I'm gonna tighten them for sure, but uh, I think some Loctite would be called for here. Okay, I think the best way to explain what I've done is maybe just to show you real quick. This is our power over ethernet injector that is supplied with our antenna that we bought. The, the ethernet side, the power over ethernet side is gonna go out and it's, I've got it routed into the attic right here. And now the other one is just the LAN cable. So this yellow is the LAN cable. This, this is gonna go to our network to our LAN. I've got it routed to our gateway appliance. Uh, everybody's application will be specific to your house. Um, but I, I'd like to make a video one time about our gateway um, because if we actually use that as a firewall gateway to protect our family from the internet and uh, protect the kids and just block ads and everything. Um, so one day I'd like to do a video on that. But now we're just going to plug this in and we're going to turn this on and make sure that we go check that we can connect to it on the network. 
Okay, we're gonna try to cover up this hole with a nice plate. Um, you of course have your choices between, you got your split plates here that you can wrap around. Uh, there's a hole in the middle for putting the, the cable through. So you just put this on either side and close it up and screw that in. That's uh, especially if you have an existing um, wall box in there. Same thing with, uh, so this one was uh, a single hole in the middle like that. And this one is a foam hole in the middle. You could get more than one cable through there. If you don't have a box or you don't want to do wall anchors into drywall, uh, then you can use uh, something more like this where um, it's still, it's a, this is actually a brush plate um, and it has the cover and the, um, the brush on the back. And uh, you can use one of these. So this is a, a bracket uh, when you don't have a box, you can use this bracket to hold on to the sheet, um, the sheet rock or the drywall. Uh, so you can screw this in, it'll tighten up on itself onto the, the drywall, and then you can uh, screw the, the actual bracket into this. So, but you do have to cut a hole if you don't already have a, a, a rectangle hole. Okay, I'm standing here right under the soffit. So we went from the inside of the house, we came through the attic space just a quick ways, and we came out through the soffit here. So this is where we're going to patch our hole. We're gonna add this split plate on either side of the ethernet cable and sort of cover that hole. No to bugs and yes to the cover plate. Okay, it's close. We just had to set our angle with the wing nut and uh, set our cable in place underneath the soffit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it approximately. I can see my cable's already getting taut. I wanna go loosen that up. We don't want any sharp bends in our ethernet cable or any pinch points. I've got it approximately pointed where I want it to go. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Okay, that's nice, nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this too. I think we're pretty close. You know, it might, could be improved once we get into the, the apps. We might be able to see that it's improved uh, by shifting the angle, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna leave it here for now. Okay, our next course of action, we're gonna try to just tie down our cable or ethernet cable with some cable clamps here. So. Okay, I'm just gonna continue with this down the length of this soffit and that takes me to our patio where I've already got it tucked. Uh, right between the the metal roof and the rafters. I've already got this wire tucked Okay, let's go ahead and measure our distance from the building to the shop. Okay, with one antenna up, we just gotta trim the trees back to make way for the signal to go through without hindrance. So, trusty pole saw, and we're gonna take down some limbs that are interfering with the signal. Uh, and then we're gonna go down to the other side and we're gonna take out whatever tree is in the way.
the lag screws weren't working. Um, I thought maybe they would stick in the metal, they did not. So I drilled that out, put the screws in, there was nothing to back it, not enough. Not enough for the screw to grip on, especially being a lag screw, uh, there was a bit of lag there. So I, I put a board on the back, that didn't work either, uh, not tight enough. Um, I thought that would work, but something must have gone wrong. So. What I'm doing, I'm switching over to bolts. I got bolts, washers, nuts. We're gonna just bolt this thing on uh, front and back. Okay, let me show you what we did on the back side here where the red iron is. Okay, just so it's clear, we put two bolts in instead of the screws. We should have brought my cobalt bits um, from Bosch as what the ones that I have, um, but I forgot to bring them. So uh, we drilled through the red iron and through the outer metal. Okay, let me show you where I made a mistake. The, the red iron, which is actually gonna hold on to something, it was a little bit lower than I thought. Um, so I, I ended up drilling two holes that were just through the outer sheet metal covering and had to redrill holes a little bit lower that they would go through the red iron, the, the metal beams. Okay, the, the bracket is pretty solid, so we're gonna put up our pole now. So let me show you what I had in mind and explain what I was gonna do. Okay, behind me you should be able to see there's a little hole in the insulation. I thought about bringing it in there, not making any new holes. And we still could do that, but unfortunately there are some, some rough ends here for a bathroom. You know, we got a water line. So I don't know what we're gonna do here with the bathroom. There is no bathroom, by the way, it's just rough ends. Um, but it's here and my wife, brought up a good point that if we ever did put in a shower or something with steam, we wouldn't want the equipment right there. So I could bring it in, but then mount it somewhere else. Option two would just be to drill a new hole. I'm looking at where would be a good place for a, a little utility cabinet or closet. One thing that maybe is not clear, you can connect to this signal from your cell phone or anything that if you're in the line of sight, it's just another Wi-Fi signal. Okay, while we're over here, I'll run some speed tests and take some screenshots and show them to you. Let me do a, a speed test um, here. I think we'll do one on the back side of the building. This, the signal would have to go ar bounce around the building a little bit and come around the back side. So we'll get that. And then we'll go in uh, right in the middle and see what kind of signal we get. Just on, just on Wi-Fi from the other antenna. Um, and then I, I'm gonna test uh, inside the building, but by the window. In, in theory, you could set just with one antenna, you could broadcast over here and then set a Wi-Fi router in a window or something that could get the signal and, and rebroadcast its own Wi-Fi network. We are line of sight from the antenna to my phone. The internet we pay for is max 100 down, but it's not, city gigabit i'm getting 84 down 84 and a half down and 6.69 megabits per second up it's a pretty good signal actually uh relative to what we would get uh hardwired into the house the antenna that we're going to install is right above my head here okay now we're on the back side of the building almost 300 feet line of sight plus a couple bounces you're you're getting a signal off the trees uh off the shop there's a big reduction here. I'm getting only 22.8 down. So we were getting line of sight 84. Now we're down to 22. I just tested inside the building, in the middle of the building, with the door closed. I got no signal. Within the building, I'm not getting any signal from the, the antenna 300 feet away. Okay, I went inside and I held my phone as close as I could to this window, which is basically still line of sight just within the window here um, and I did have to get close to the window to get this speed but I got 80.9 so almost as good as standing outside by 7.06 up which is actually better than what we measured out here in theory let's say you had an extra access point or router you could convert to an access point 
and you don't want to buy a second antenna for the ultra st strong signal that could be coming you could probably stick a you know a wi-fi access point here and you could run it depending on you know your setup you would have to it would have to be a repeater it would have to take this signal and repeat it again you know you could run it in client mode or whatever to to get more devices attached to it uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the second antenna get that ultra strong signal going that's point to point and then we're going to run that cable inside and we'll hook that into um, our other tp link uh, router which we've converted to access point mode so that'll be running an access point and then we'll be able to we could hardline things into it if we want and we, we may do that later but basically we just want to create a wi-fi zone i think i learned my lesson on the last one the ethernet that i plugged into there i had to get up on the ladder and plug it in um, and there's a little cover that covers that well when i tried to remove the ethernet just temporarily to wrap it around the gutter the the cover was so tight that it yanked on the ethernet and it no longer clicks it does work but it no longer clicks into place is which is something that really bothers me but it's going to work lesson learned i'm going to get everything together on the ground uh, i don't want to fiddle with that in the air here's this back cover that i mean kind of a weird cover i wish they had done something better I, I think this is supposed to be tight but it's a little too tight in my opinion so it sort of slides on and this hole your cable goes in this hole but it's a at least for this outdoor cable it's a very tight fit so i don't know if you can see but that is very tight it's squeezing the cable a little bit definitely going to be um sort of a watertight mostly watertight connection there we're going to be opening up our TP-Link Archer AX11000 certified refurbished. Bought this off of eBay, TP-Link's store on eBay. So we're going to open this up and get it started. We're going to take care of setting this up in the house before we take it over to the barn, the shop. All right, folks, here it is, the Amazon Basics 48 inch, four foot power strip. This is gonna help us plug things in. I'm running out of plugs in here, but come this winter, I think I'm gonna turn this into uh, a workbench power strip. I'm gonna make a workbench out of a, an old table that we have reinforce it and put this on it. But right now it's gonna help us turn on our access point and our power over ethernet. Okay, it looks like we're powered on on the antenna. Let me show you what it looks like on the other side. You should see three lights lit up. Okay, right here, the black coming in is our power over ethernet to the antenna and the, the blue cable is the LAN side. So that's going, that's gonna go to our access point. You can see the light on the access point is white now. It was red when it was booting up, kind of scared me for a second. So the power over ethernet box, it has a, the blue cord going into the LAN that goes to the access point into the WAN side, W-A-N. So everything's working, I've got great signal. So there you go, now we just need to drill through the wall wherever we want. Uh, everything is working just like we want, just time to clean it up and make it look good. Okay, latest speed test, phone, Wi-Fi to the router, hardlined into the power over ethernet antenna, all the way back to the house, to the internet connection. So that speed is the best we've had yet at this location, 91.4 and 9.97 9 up. All right, I think I've made my decision. I think I'm gonna listen to my wife, good idea. And I'm not gonna go in where the bathroom might be, just out of an abundance of caution. I thought about putting it above the door. I don't know how that'll affect passage in the future. And I have enough cable to come all the way to this. Now, I wanna stay away from the, the high voltage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay uh, at least you know eight inches or more, go up, uh, just above here uh, where two of the red iron beams meet. I don't want to cross that uh, because I want to lay it in the tray and come right down without crossing anything, uh, making it more difficult than it has to be. So I'm going to, there is a beam right here on the inside too. So I'm going to come up and probably aim just slightly left of this light fixture. I must have misplaced my drill bit for one inch, or I just never had one. I don't know. 
Uh, but I do have a one inch auger bit, so I don't know if this is gonna work for going through this metal, but we'll see. It might make a mess and we might get through, but as long as we get through, we can figure it out. This is a, a grommet from Garmin, uh, kind of meant for boats, you know, attaching your GPS to your boat and stuff like that. So here it is, a little split grommet. Get our cable in the middle there, let it squeeze it and hopefully it'll fit in that hole. Okay, we're gonna finish this tomorrow. We gotta find a way to make that a little bit bigger hole. That auger isn't working too well. Okay, we're back today to put this grommet in. I brought my spade bits with me and our hole saw bits. It calls for, with this thing, a one and a quarter inch hole. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna be, you can see I scratched this up a little bit, so I'm not proud of that, but we got it in there and it's working, so. Lesson learned, I'd probably start with a, uh, a hole saw next time. Uh, maybe the spade bit, but the hole saw seems like that would have been better if I had started that way. That way I could center myself with the, the center drill bit. All right, we're just gonna lay this up. Hopefully we can get it up here nicely. There's just too much spiraling going on with this wire. All right, this part didn't go as well as I thought, but it did go. Uh, we got the grommet in there. It's not quite super secure. Should, could probably come back and put some silicone around that. Um, I think it would have worked better if it was an inch and a quarter, because I can see it's kind of wanting to push itself out. But we got it in there. We took it up with a couple clips uh, screwed into the, the, the awning roof here. I tried to go into the red metal and it was just slow going. Okay, folks, we're really done. This grommet is in there. I got it into one and an eighth of an inch. It probably would have been better if it was one and a quarter inch, like it said. Uh, but having already drilled the hole with a drill bit, it was hard to get a, a hole saw centered on it and a force, I mean a uh, spade bit centered on it. So with the spade bit, I was at least able to round out the hole to one and an eighth inch. Um, and now the grommet is, it's in there and it's barely wanting to, to slide out, push itself out. Uh, if we ever get a chance, I might come back and improve this situation. But it's working, we're in the building. Uh, it's clipped across the top, not the way I intended to do it. I wanted to just lay it in the, the red iron beam tray. Only needed two clips and we're done uh, holding it up. So I don't know, maybe there's a better solution. Maybe you can tell me if there's a better solution to this, but um, you know, a shorter cord would be um, better and easier if we had just uh, gone into the very corner where the antenna was and then we could have routed this in the building. Also, if you don't want to drill such a large hole, you could do your own cables, um, tie off the, the ends of your ethernet cable yourself. I just use patch cables that I bought uh, to make this a lot faster. Uh, and I, I don't have the tool to, to punch the ends of the ethernet cable. Um, maybe I should go ahead and get one of those. <laughs> All right, that's it folks. We got 300 feet of t antenna to antenna. We've got Wi-Fi internet, so we can do videos, we can do live stream, we can do security, we can do radio, we can do TV, whatever we want to do here. So now we're good to go on internet here. Okay, now we're just going to patch that giant hole that I made. Okay, I think things could have been done a little bit differently now that I look back at it. Uh, but antenna to antenna, uh, I, I haven't even properly aligned it. Um, you know, I just eyeballed it and it's already given me almost uh, ideal speeds here. We're paying for 100 megabit to the house. We're getting 90 something here uh, with a phone to Wi-Fi to the, to the line to the antenna to antenna back to the internet. So all of that, we're getting 90 something, which is really good. 
Um, we're going to probably upgrade our internet later to a higher speed and then we'll be able to tell does that all, make it all the way here. Um, so it should with this uh, double antenna 5G uh, Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz I should say, connection. So. I kind of feel like this is one of those videos that uh, is going to be curious, interesting to a lot of people, but there's going to be some people out there that really need something like this uh, and don't maybe don't know what uh, is out there available. Um, the hardest thing about this, I'd say, is uh, if you don't know anything about networking, if you don't know IP addresses and all that, that's certainly going to be the hard part. You're probably going to want to get some help with that. Uh, but the hardware wasn't too bad as long as you have some tools on hand. The hardware, uh, you know, just know what you're drilling into. Uh, I had to make a little adjustment there, go to bolts instead of the screws. For our situation, and maybe for yours, take out some trees in the middle that are interfering. Uh, get, get that direct line of sight with no interference, uh, so your, your signal is not weakened. If you, if you have any tips for me, let me know. Uh, if I can help in the comments, let me know if, if you're doing something like this and you, and you get stuck. Um, give us a like and a subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time on Homestead, y'all.